something Grace is transforming and awakening to a brand new nature wrote serve your way to success after decades of working and volunteering in various areas of the service industry it is intended to aid anyone in the service industry to improve their skills and success sister pat is an award-winning speaker author and consultant her passionate tenacious energy has driven her to overcome challenges and obstacles in a miraculous way she has three grown children with her husband and charity volunteer partner in the last 12 years who has one grown child. Together they have eight grandchildren and two great grandchildren. To be successful is always a challenge requiring solid support. Sister Pat offers that and more from her years of wisdom in simple, easy to follow steps to all of her fellow servant champions. And perfect timing as she joins us very shortly. And uh, what you're doing now, so. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for having me today. I appreciate you. I am currently not living in my home. I live in the state of Florida in a town about 20 minutes east of Daytona Beach. Mm -hmm. However, I am temporarily living in my mother-in-law's home. She lives in Mesa, Arizona. Oh. And so I have been in her home caregiving for her she is a 93-year-old retired nurse who has been diagnosed with dementia so that she didn't have to leave her home. My husband and I came here to caregive for her, and we've been doing that for about a year now, and she's anxious to go on and be with the Lord, and we're praying for that, and we appreciate all of the supporting prayers from any of your listeners, too, mm -hmm. because we know that she's ready, mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to suffer anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was finding myself um, as we were here with some, you know, interesting uh, promptings really from the Holy Spirit to start writing again. It's been quite a while since I've written anything and I just really was led by the Holy Spirit to write this book and get it out now at this time. And in fact, she wrote a little forward in the front of the book for me oh, because, because she thought it was important to her as well. So yeah, I worked in uh, not only uh, caregiving for elderly people, but in the service industry for over 20 years. And from every aspect of service, I know that we don't, we don't always give the kind of service that we want to receive. But when we try to emulate the behaviors and the actions of Jesus, we're more likely to give the service that we want to receive. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've learned to do mm -hmm. over the years. And that's what I do, whether it's caregiving for my mother-in-law or taking care of my grandkids, which I have eight of those. I have three grown children. They, none of them live in Arizona. So <laughs> I haven't been seeing them either through Zoom or uh, just talking to them on the phone. For about a year now, and I'm starting to miss them. <laughs> is, is the book still called The Serve Your Way to Success? Or is that, been, is that the name of the book? That is the title, yes. Yeah. Serve that Your Way to Success. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, has it, <clears throat> has it been published? Yes? No? Not yet? The book is available on yeah. Kindle as an ebook. Okay. Um, the paperback has not been published yet. We're getting ready to launch. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited about that. So <clears throat> the prompting of the Holy Spirit for the book, um, that came about just recently, or has that been something brewing for a while for you? Um, how long did it take you to write this, this book, you would say? This particular book, I started in the summer last year, and I finished it and had it available on Kindle on December 31st. Oh, wow. I, I did have a coach that helped me. And I um, couldn't have done it with their help. Yeah, sometimes a coach is, is very helpful and necessary. Yeah. Well, I was not um, ever in that uh, thought mindset, I guess, um, in my younger years. I didn't realize the value of a coach as much as a mentor. I always had a mentor or an elder that I would... Uh, seek out advice from, which I still have, but I had 
the opportunity to get a nutritional coach first. And uh, when I saw the benefit of that, I thought maybe I could use a coach with this book so I could get it done before my mother-in-law wasn't here to see it. So that's what I did. Hmm. <clears throat> now with the illness of dementia, you've been working with your mother-in-law, caretaking for her over the years. Um, it's interesting because uh, we actually just attended a funeral even just today um, with wow. a dear friend of ours who passed away from that same illness. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the interesting thing that everyone was sharing, very similar stories that like, um, you could, there's a way of connecting on the spiritual that I feel like in each person sort of articulate this today, um, the Holy Spirit is there, you know, with that person. And um, there's just such a beautiful um, light that, that guides um, us to them. And that's why it's like God puts certain people in our life. I truly believe that for a reason, <clears throat> sometimes for a season, sometimes for life. And I feel like those connections that we make make us stronger, make us who we are. And the connections that we had with um, this one particular woman, um, I just, everyone that has, has seen her in her life, and I can only speak about her, you can tell me more about your mother-in-law, but it's so, it's so powerful to see like the grace of God working in their life. Um, seems like whenever one door closed for that family, another one would open. They were just miracle after miracle after miracle. Um, so it's just a beautiful thing to see, you know, how the power of God works in her husband's life. And he was a strong, solid rock for her, helping her through that. And then how the church helped and just always being there for um, people in need is, is what I like to see. And, you know, sometimes you don't see that. It depends on kind of where you are and, and what situation. But um, we're lucky. I was lucky to be in a really supportive church environment for this particular friend of ours. And yeah, just such such a gift. And, and it's just funny, like God's timing that that you would come here. I had no idea that you're taking care of <laughs> dementia as well. I, right. I just, I just think it, it's a fast, it's actually an interesting disease to me. I find it very interesting. Um, and it's, I know people suffer and it's, and people want to go home, but there's also like God's redeeming all things. Right. And he's making all things new. So, um, there's all, there's always good that comes out of these, these trials. Um, so oh, yeah, my mother-in-law and I have grown into such a close relationship as close as my own mother who I lost when I was 14 You're like a room. And, and she's also um as close to me as my stepmother who I had for 50 years and both of them are gone mm -hmm. I didn't just start working with um her I've worked with people um at the end of their life specifically for over 20 years Mm -hmm. um, my daughter teases and says, I'm like a uh, guru for people that are dying mm -hmm. and I help them to get to the next place. Awesome. And God has given that mission to me. Well, he gave it to me and he, 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 he just opened up the doors to make it happen for me. Um, years ago, I was, um, you know, a stay at home mom when all my kids were little. And when I had my youngest one going off to high school I said oh maybe I'll go back to school and during that time God said no I think you're going to go do this instead and I started taking care of people that were at the end of their life in their own home and I went to college and did get my bachelor's degree with honors I can't tell you anything about what I learned in college but I could tell you every single thing that I learned from every one of those people that I helped go from this word to the next. Wow. Some of them had dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, stroke, all different kinds of things cause us to come to the end of our journey. But until we're connected, like you said, with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We don't get to go. And maybe it's because we're meant to be a blessing to someone else, or maybe it's because we haven't learned everything that we're here to learn and we need to know before we go. That is an individual uh, situation for each of us to reflect and, and learn as we go. Yeah. So now, were you in hospice care, or or in ministry? Was it more ministry oriented? The, um, when I first started, I worked for a uh, home care company, mm -hmm. and now it's more ministry. Okay. Yeah, so. What do they, they call that? A, like a chaplain, or? <laughs> to think of well, that. I. I am an or, ordained, I'm an ordained minister, but I just call, call myself Sister Pat. Okay. Okay. It, it's easier. And, and especially for 
uh, people that are uh, more towards the end, it's easier for them to relate to me as their sister. And Pat is just an easier way to say my name because my last name is incredibly hard to say. Oh, how do you say your last name? <laughs> I didn't ask you that before I said it. I hope I didn't do it right, but we'll see. <laughs> well, it, it's actually pronounced Chittenden. Chittenden. And it, and it does come from the East Coast. So I think okay. you got it right when you say it. Okay, good. <laughs> Most of the people on the West Coast get it wrong. <laughs> So yeah, I'd love to hear, I know this sounds like maybe a cliche question, yes. but I ask, what that. is your favorite Bible verse and why? <laughs> or um, or even just like right now, what's Holy Spirit Holy Spirit speaking to you? Um, that you feel like, you know, people people need to hear these days. If you have a word for us, we'd love to hear it. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Well, you know, before we talked, I, I prayed about what, what God wanted me to speak and what, what words he wanted me to say. Sure. And I, I know we talked about our, our, in our email that we were going to talk about freedom. Mm. And, and I was having a conversation with someone earlier this week. And so I really think um, the, especially in light of the holiday coming up, it's getting ready to be what St. Patrick's Day, that's a big Irish holiday. Mm. So I kind of think that this might um, be what God wanted me to share with you. I heard a uh, radio announcer, I think, talking about how the Irish uh, talk about uh, different types of uh, emotions and things that um, trouble us normally. Now, here in America, we tend to um, maybe not speak about things this way. So if you're having, let's say, a time of depression because you're going through a mourning, which, you know, you just mentioned that you went to a funeral. So that's the why I picked that one. But it could be anything. It could be you're going through a lot of stress or anxiety. Your family's going through turmoil, whatever emotion you're dealing with. A lot of people say, well, I'm sad or I'm lonely. In America, you hear that a lot. <laughs> but the Irish don't say it that way. They say it. And I was raised this way without even knowing that's why. But they say loneliness is upon me. And the Lord was showing me because someone was talking to me about their loneliness this week. The Lord was showing me that they don't know how to get it off of them. They don't know how to get free from that emotion. And that is the real freedom that the Holy Spirit gives us. Because when we keep our eyes on Jesus, like Peter did in the boat, then we don't see that loneliness or guilt or depression or whatever that emotion was that had us in bondage. So if anything, I think that the freedom that the Holy Spirit gives us to really elevate above those daily emotions is the word that I feel God is saying we need to really share today. I love that. I love the loneliness is upon me because then you're not saying I am lonely. You're not identifying with it. You're not you know, in the word of faith movement, I, I feel like I was a part of like every denomination at one point. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. I think the Lord does that sometimes. I, I don't know if you've ever read the book um, by C.S. Lewis, um, Screw Tape Letters. Uh, he gets all confused about religion. He has this experience with God, then he gets all confused about religion, goes to all the different various places, and the demons try to confuse him. <laughs> Hence, denominations now. Um, right. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so there was, um, where was I going with this? Um, oh, identifying with with something. Like, if we say, I am depressed, or I am anxious it's like you're you're giving the enemy a footstool kind of thing like you're you're taking it on as your identity when our true identity is in christ and <clears throat> we are truly new creations in christ whether we believe it or not even if we don't feel it enough or we feel like we don't have enough faith I and mean, jesus said if you had a faith of a mustard seed you can move mountains so nobody has enough faith to save themselves that's why we have jesus he it's a faith of jesus to save so next time you know you're in doubt or feeling like you don't have enough belief, lean on his belief, because that's what helped me through all of all the questions, all the doubts, um, any kind of insecurities, anytime I felt less than someone else. And every day, you know, still growing and learning and, and fr from other people, you know, uh, so people can absolutely for reason, you know, I would say like, you know, it's every person that you come across is a blessing. So absolutely. I know when I first um had a revelation of the verse uh faith is the substance of things hoped for i always have had a tremendous amount of faith that is a gift that god has given me and i have seen numerous miracles in my life and 
I've only said to God, I don't understand how I how I receive this faith or how I'm the one that gets this faith, but I want to have other people have some of it. If I could just give them some of mine, they could get where they need to go. <laughs> that was when he made this revelation to me about how faith is the substance of what each of us hopes for. So we have to really focus on what our hopes and dreams are to develop our faith. And when we focus on those hopes and dreams and they're in line with what the Holy Spirit and God have for our future, that's when we feel the faith grow and the substance of it. Mm. Ooh, that's good. I love that. <laughs> Beautiful. And that's where the freedom comes into play, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it all works together to guide us to the place that we need to be so that we can be the brightest light in the darkest spot yeah. where we're at. You know, each of us, I think of it like if you think of the earth like a ball of darkness the bible says that the enemy the devil roams the earth freely and I think about that and I feel like except for where the light is right because where the light is there can't be any darkness right and the light is God Jesus Christ the light in us the power of God so if the world has got this darkness and we're just like pinpricks of light poking out all over little flashlights <laughs> Yeah, that's the, way, that's the way I envision it. And a lot of times I have these crazy visions. I don't know what they are. And I pray and I pray. And so God tells me. So that was one. I kept seeing these lights and I couldn't figure it out. And you were talking about how dementia is and how there's a connection. Well, my mother-in-law, she saw it like a grid. And like all the grids were the connection pieces. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she doesn't to this day really understand it mm -hmm. because she doesn't have the background of different types of faith like mm -hmm. what you said you studied and I studied back in the day I think that's uh something that God brings some people through mm -hmm. that maybe other people don't go through mm -hmm. beautiful kind of like your background there there's all those lights <laughs> it looks like that's, and then lights coming out <laughs> it's it's the space background oh, that zoom God. offers my husband and I do a volunteer charity costuming for Star Wars costuming oh cool in space. so <laughs> he picked the space background for us yeah, we we wear our most requested costume. It's the Bith alien. Oh. And, and I feel like God says we are just aliens on this earth waiting to be beamed up to heaven. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> didn't Jesus say I didn't come from this earth, this place? Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, um, well, not sometimes, every day. <laughs> I when I have my private time with God, I'll put my hands up like I'm plugging in to my source. Mm -hmm. And I've done that for many years, so many years that I don't even realize I do it. <laughs> as I have a very uh, stressful day, I might find myself just doing it as I'm driving or in the kitchen. <laughs> and the only reason I realize it because my grandkids caught me and said, what are you doing, Grams? <laughs> Is it like why do you get your hands up in the air like, like that? Putting your hands up in the air is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, like I'm connecting to God. Go. I'm getting strength from my source. <laughs> you know, I just can't go around with it. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes we have to like reach up and call out and worship, and then other times we have to hit our knees. So it, it <laughs> exactly, kind of, it kind of reminds exactly. me of the cross in a way, like because we kneel down before Him at the cross and lay our right. lay our sins with Him and just trust on Him. But then also we're called to like have that vertical relationship. We got the horizontal right with the people, and then the vertical with God and just worship and adoration. Exactly. I love it, I love it when Francois de Troy said, um, Francois de Troy wrote the Greek um, paraphrase of the Bible. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but um, I met him in person, actually. And, Exciting. Um, yeah, when he actually like talks about like the word holiness and what it means, because um, one of the denominations I um, stepped foot in for a bit was Pentecostal and <laughs> the whole Pentecostal holiness movement and all that um, can send people into like a fear state, like, oh my goodness, I have to do this and do that in order to be holy. Because Jesus says, you know, be perfect as I am perfect. And that can um, lead people into a lot of striving, heavy duty striving, which we're called to avoid. <laughs> we're called to, um, you know, if we strive into anything, we're striving to enter his rest, right? Exactly. So it's so hard for many of us to do, including myself, um, you know, because sometimes it just feels more comfortable to strive <laughs> because that's what we're used to, you know, like fasting, praying, doing this, doing that. 
And there's so much grace for that. Um, but with the holiness movement, it was all about like um, performance based. But what Francois said was that holiness is actually is a sim the, the word for holiness in literally means perfect joy, like glory and joy. So I'm like, that's different. I never thought of holiness as being joyful. So like, whereas holiness for me, like, I always kind of had this, like, I thought it was stoicness and being like, um, very serious, like holiness. That's why when I was a kid, you know, and for example, <laughs> let me just show you what I mean. For example, something like this, a little Jesus stuffed animal would be very, very offensive to someone who's really into holiness. You know, like there's, it's very serious. You know, that's what I was <laughs> Holiness is the joy of the Lord. And so I'm just like, wow, I just never, I don't know. It's one of the revelations that I had. I don't know with the help of Francois, of course. <laughs> so I just, I love that. I love studying like the words, the, the Greek words and what was another one? Oh, metanoia means change your mind, repentance, which was another one that um, that I learned too. Which I'm sure you you know you've heard all this, but uh, I'll just let you share after this. But I'm just excited to share because this is something that I learned like just last year, so it still feels fresh. Um, that that repentance means metanoia in the Greek, and metanoia means to change your mind. And in our mind, we were alienated from God separated, alienated, whatever word you want to use, but it was, but Paul says in your mind, this is nothing literal, of course, because nothing could separate you from God. So some denominations, Baptists, I think some other ones say that you can be separated from God forever, even though that's impossible, according to the Bible. <laughs> and that doesn't make sense because we're all born, um, like in the perfect image and likeness of God and the whole story with the the tree of life is to, you know, if, if he were to like set, keep us in the garden, keep Adam and Eve in the garden with that, that sin, they would have been doomed for eternity. But he, the reason he banished them was so they could be redeemed. Like the whole story is beautiful, but it's been so corrupted. And so, um, so it's just so, such a beautiful discovery as like the Lord reveals these things, you know, and that was a big one for me too, repentance. Cause I used to think repentance, like holiness was, Am I doing enough of it? Do I do it on a daily basis? But now, I like you said, I have so much freedom in in the Bible. Everything I read in the Bible no longer scares me. You know, it's like, all right, there's this is all written for a good reason, a good purpose. So, um, so just learning to, um, I guess, be teachable and keep keep learning and growing. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, it's it, it's amazing um, the perspective that I have now is changed so much yeah. as far as those religions that maybe you mentioned or some others that you didn't um that i won't mention but the way that i see it is not any different than the pharisees that jesus dealt with yeah. all of the religion is very legalistic it's very manipulative and uses fear to control the masses that's not what God wanted and that's why he sent his son and he said this is how you love this is the example and if we walk like Jesus did then we don't have to strive mm -hmm. there's not there, there's nothing left that we have to worry about just keep our eyes on him and love everybody around us mm -hmm. and we'll be okay mm -hmm. but the religious communities want to guilt us and shame us control us so that they feel like they've earned their way mm. and none of us are earning it and i Jesus. don't think it's consciousness all the time i don't think people even know you know that's what that's why i said it's for me now it's a perspective right i understand it different than i used yeah. to because now i'm more conscious and more aware the lord has shown me things that have given me different insights yeah it's beautiful oh wow and, yeah, i'd love to i'd love to hear more stories about um your your stories with your patients. I want your patients. Um, <laughs> the people, uh, no, not patients. What's the word for it? <laughs> people that are on their deathbed and and um, in prayer. People that you were praying for. Um, I what what is um is there a story that you could share with us that you feel comfortable sharing? Just start, or even like, it doesn't have to be um or, you know confidentiality and all. I don't want to talk about someone. I don't know, but um maybe like what's your what was your experience like? Like if someone maybe wants to do that in their life, what would you suggest they do you know what what was um maybe a challenge that you had doing it and then how you overcame it um you know were there discrepancies with family for instance like you know maybe a family member wants you to pray and then another one doesn't or who knows you know were there any challenges that you were up against in those 20 years and how'd you overcome them something like that 
Oh, yes. In every situation, there's a challenge. Okay. Every home you go into, it's, it's going to be a challenge. In your own home, you have situational things come up that become challenging in your family dynamic. And having an elderly parent at home is a challenge for everybody. It's an adjustment. And the, the first thing that we did to make the process easier is we created a notebook maybe um oh, like one of these or uh even, even something simple like a, a steno book where you write down the time that you get here and everything that you feed or give that patient um even things that they say or do that may be relevant or if you think they're insignificant sometimes they're relevant so you can write these down keeping this little journal has become something very common in the uh, home care business now, so much so that they have electronic apps and things you can do it with. But what makes it helpful is it makes a connection between the caregivers. So uh, for me, when I care give, and, and now I only do it for family, but at the time I would only care give in the overnight hours. And so generally, you know, if it was like your uh, parent at your home, you would be there uh, maybe during the day or you would have a caregiver for eight hours and you would come for eight hours and I would come for eight hours. So there would be different people throughout the day taking care of that person and having those notes really keeps things cohesive and keeps the communication flowing. And it also helps people realize that how fast and when the declines start. So for instance, if you're logging the uh, medication for pain, even if it's just Tylenol or natural medication, when you see the increase, then you know the pain's getting worse, right? You know, there's more of a decline. So those kinds of things are very important to be aware of. Just like with the, uh, there was one patient I took care of who had, um, she had a stroke and her brother was her caregiver and he worked an eight hour shift. So um, she didn't have uh, enough uh, funding to have 24 hour care. I would only come to her house three to four times a week for 45 hours a day. I would bathe her and feed her and, and help her to do some of the activities that she needed to do as far as like physical therapy. She was so bitter and so angry about the whole situation. She fought physically trying to do anything. And that was the most challenging patient I had. I prayed every day before I went to her house. I prayed the entire time I was there. And I worked with her for a solid month. At the end of the month, when I came to her house, she would scream out from her room, is that you, Sister Pat? Hurry up and get in here and get me out of bed. It was the mind change because she got rid of that bitterness. And within a week of that visit, she passed and went on to heaven. So those are the kinds of things that God will do when we just open up our heart and pray and be the vessel he needs us to be. Wow, that's beautiful. Love that. Oh. <laughs> so good. Um, so it is it is 50 out after. Would you want to um, share another, another story or um, would you like to share about your book or anything else before we close up? Um, okay. I, I would love to, yes. Uh, I have um, recently started a Facebook group to oh. uh, support women who are going through divorce or trauma of any kind. Oh. I would love to um, invite anybody who feels like they just need a place to get support to join the group. It's just uh, women warriors. Women? Uh, okay. Warriors, yeah. And, and we are just, um, we're just sharing life and supporting each other in prayer. I um, invite people to, I do a little uh, walk on Wednesdays, I invite people to get healthy, get up, get moving. And then on Mondays, I do a prayer. If you need prayer, you can join me on Zoom and we'll do a prayer on Mondays. Oh, so nice. I would love to be there for anybody who really feels like they need it. Beautiful, thank you. Yeah, I'll put that in the description. Just give me a link and I'll stick it right in there. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely. I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. You know what I heard today too? Um, I'm looking at my picture back there today. I choose joy. 
And mm. uh, I heard this for the first time, beautiful acronym for joy. Uh, so Jesus is first, others is second, and you are third. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of neat. <laughs> that is beautiful. Never heard that one before, but <laughs> beautiful. Anyway, um, so wrapping this up, would you like to pray us out? And then we can uh, chat a little after. I'll stop the recording. Um, Absolutely. Really, Absolutely. Really, like, let's pray for people that you know are going through trauma or just need some relief or grieving. Uh, we're just lifting them up today. So thank you. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for your time together yes. with us. We just appreciate everything that you're doing in our lives mm -hmm. and in the lives that we're touching. We thank you, Father, that where two or more agree, it shall be done. And we agree that your light shall shine brighter in the world mm. as the darkness grows. And that means that we're going to be closer to you because the light within us comes directly from you. So just draw us each, Lord, closer to you. Draw us into your presence and into your light so that we can keep shining and living your love to the world around us. In all of the people that can hear the sound of my voice, I pray that the Holy Spirit would give you a quickening, that you would know that you know that this is the real God, the creator. This isn't a law, a religion. This is real. And God has a purpose and a plan, no matter where you're at now, to see you through to the light and the love and the joy that is only known in him. Mm. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. Mm. And thank you, Lord, for Sister Pat. And thank you for her presence here today on Zoom. Thank you for just the honor and the privilege to speak with her, to hear her stories, her testimonies, her faith. May her words encourage others who may be on their journey experiencing some of the same things she's experienced or maybe different but lord we just praise you exalt you you know the kingdom of heaven is inside us and that we are the light and the light does shine in the darkness so we just ask you to keep blessing this family pat's family her friends her work and everyone she comes across. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thanks for coming. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Something breaks is transforming and awakening to a brand new nature.